Shalom. I'm still here and I'm doing some research and tables. We're going to go through a lot of stuff, so this is going to be a, a fairly long video. But coming up on this uh, season, Nazgadol uh, Halako, great miracle happened here in Nazgadol Halasham. Great miracle happened there. So, let me get started, um, and I want to show a table that I've been working on now. I did this last year, and it was also in one of my videos, so I just, um, I think I pulled another um, version of it, but I'm not sure, I can't remember. But, we're coming up on the dreidel, so what I decided to do was um, put the acronym <laughs> and search that out and see what would, you know, what could come up on it. And so, we did a table, and there's like different dra you know, dreidel, and I've been working on that. I started that last year, so I worked on it, you know, in, I guess that was January 2017. This was last year, 12-26, and uh, 2016, so we've been working on it. But the season of miracles is here, so we're going to see um, what kind of stuff might happen. So this was a uh, skip. The 1235 from Lamentations 327 to Esther 9.8. And there's so much in Esther. It's just, a, it is a miracle. And how he works behind the scenes. And even though you can't see, he's still working all things for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So when, this one's the great miracle happened there. So this is what the acronym for that was. Several things that have come up. In this. So, again, I did the key code back then, daybreak, um, nest, um, it's that scripture, it says, who are these that fly among clouds of dust to the nest? Um, let's see here. Visibility, a variability, transformation, doorway. Cold, crisp, bleak, um, six and sukkah. Now I found this really interesting because Hanukkah is like a pattern of Sukkot. So we're going to dig into that some. Now this is some more that came up. Daybreak Haggai. So we have in the 24th day of the 12th month, which was really interesting for what happened last year on the resolution. And it will actually be a year and ten days of, from the date that happened last year to the dedication of Hanukkah, the eighth day. So I thought that was pretty interesting. It's a concept of a flood, daybreak again, Leah, um, of flashlight or lamp, of flambeau, and we'll get to these here. So. I thought this was so cool is Isaiah came up right here, okay, so the, the search term is here, Nezgadol, Hayo, Shem, or Shem, and then you have Isaiah's over here to the right, you have Ishmael going diagonally right here, then you have Israel, Which is right here. We have Jerusalem. Right here. We have Ocean. Down here. Wait, that's what that is. Our war combination. A war. Right next to it. So could war break out? I'm sure that the realms are definitely beating, that's for sure. So here is this table right here, and I, I thought that was very interesting. And there's a lot of information there for someone to look at and just kind of know we're on track. There's a pattern to everything. He has got this all figured out. He has encoded it here. Look at this. Just fine. Um, so it's a, it's a miracle. So a great miracle 
has happened here and a great miracle has happened there. So we're all miracles. And he's working all things good again. So we're going to start and we're going to look at this table. And I did a table on this before. Uh, Amona, you can look at that in my other video about Amona and what they were doing to it. So in the midst of all this stuff that happened, they're, look, they're getting the olives from the Amona olive trees. And this was from November 16th. So I just you know, looked at this and was kind of processing it and you know, working how he wanted us to you know, work on this. And so it talks about this. Um, volunteers will ha harvest olives. So this happened last month. And they will harvest, harvest olives with the temple oil in the orchard of Amona. And which was assigned to the tribe of Benjamin. So here we are coming up in this, and this is the Benjamin clan. Regardless, people say. Housing in UN. This fields and vineyards shall again be purchased in this land. So we'll go through here and look at this. God pressed is, presses Israel just like we press olives. It appears that the olive is destroyed. But what is actually happening is the bitterness is being removed and the oil, the sweetness is being saved and purified to send light into the world. And Israeli children press olives for temple oil. Normally, olive oil is made by crushing the olives and then pressing them. As per the biblical commandment, olive oil is used in the menorah and is made by smashing the olives by hand and then allowing the oil to drip for several days. You shall further instruct the Israelites to bring you clear oil of beaten olives for lighting, for kindling lamps regularly. This is a really neat connection, and we're going to talk about Leviticus in this also. But that's a little bit further down, so we're going to keep going through this. So, I did a table <laughs> again. We're going to go through lots of tables. You can pause this and just look through that. I did this last was this last year again, Advent, and this was Esther one, uh, one eleven, and then do I guess I must have put that in there wrong. Two twenty one. We'll see it in a minute. Oh, one nineteen to two twenty one, and a skip of ninety three. So here we are. We have Advent, and then. Can also mean revelation or emergence, and we have the revelation of of Yeshua, and that's what the whole concept of what we're dealing with is His revelation. We have crowded. Here's the access term in red. Tabernacle, and again, here's another connection to Sukkah. Uh, seven. We have Tarshish coming up. It's in winter. Philip came up, so I'm not sure exactly what, but here is the scripture verse that the hay comes up in. And when every maid's turn had come to go to King Asherah, after she had 12 months, according to the manner woman, and then it taught, and, and he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. Okay? We have... Um, Miracle, again, miracle happened here. Rescue, salvation. Who's our salvation? Yeshua, crystal clear, liquid, transparent, parent pure, extract, relieve, eliminate, humdinger, a miracle, sign. Okay, and here we have olive harvest, olive picking, and we have lulav. Rescue, salvation. So here we are. We have this pattern of Sukkah, of Sukkot. And the reason why this is coming up like this is because celebration of Hanukkah, the fall festival of Sukkot. And we'll read in Second Maccabees, Judas Maccabeus and his followers under the leadership of Yehovah recaptured the temple and the city of Jerusalem. 
they tore down the altars which foreigners had set up in the marketplace and destroyed the other places of worship that had built been built. They purified the temple and built a new altar. Then, with new fire started by striking flint, they offered sacrifice for the first time in two years, burned incense, lighted the lamps, and set out the sacred loaves. After they had done all this, they laid face down the ground, and the Jehovah would never again let such disaster strike them. They begged him to be merciful and punish them for future sins and not hand them over anymore to barbaric pagan Gentiles. They rededicated the temple on the 25th day of the month of Kisla, the same day of the same month on which the temple had been desecrated by Gentiles. The happy celebration lasted eight days, like the festival and shelters. And the people remembered how only a short time before they had spent the festival of shelters, wandering like wild animals in the mountains and living in caves but now carrying green palm branches and sticks decorated with ivy. They paraded around, singing grateful praises to him who had brought about the purification of his own temple. Everyone agreed that the entire Jewish nation should celebrate the festival each year. So Maccabees, we have Hebrew here, the traditional Jewish explanation is that Maccabee <laughs> is an acronym, here we go, another acronym for the Torah verse that was the battle cry of the Maccabees. Mechomocha ba'elim Yehovah, who is like you among the heavenly powers, and that would be Adonai, name Yehovah, as well as an acronym for Matiachu Hachon ben Yochanan, the correlating tour verse is Exodus 15:11, the song of Moshe and the children of Israel by the sea, makes a reference to Elim with a mundane notion of natural forces, heavenly might, war, and governmental powers. And of course, you know, we have other opinions. The scholar and poet Aaron Kaminka argues that the name is a corruption. <laughs> Nathani, a leading commando in the army of King David. Moses' song of deliverance, you blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Jehovah? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In my friend, and I'm helping her with it, working and getting the Hanukkah celebration ready, and she's doing the celebration and working on getting the uh, kind of a replica of some stuff um, for our Oneg that's going to occur. And it's so amazing because the same concept is, when I was talking to a, a member and a relative, and we were talking about Leviticus 23. And every soul that shall not be humbled in the day shall be cut off from among its people. So you have Leviticus 23, and it's talking about the feast. And then it goes, talks about the Feast of Tabernacles. And then it talks about willows, branches, and um, wizards from the brook to rejoice before Jehovah your Elohim seven days in the year. And it's a perpetual, so we all know that Leviticus 23, but right after that in Leviticus 24, it's, it, it's so great. He said, you know, it's almost like a placeholder, because it goes immediately talking about the lamps and the olive oil and the tabernacle of witness. And you shall burn the lamps on the pure lampstand before Jehovah till the morrow. You shall take fine flour and make it twelve loaves. Each loaf shall be a two-tenths part, and you shall put them in two rows, each row containing six loaves, on the pure table before Jehovah. Doesn't that say he'll prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies? And you shall put on each row of pure frankincense and salt. These things shall be for loaves for a memorial set forth before Jehovah. On the Sabbath day they shall set forth before Jehovah continually before the children of Israel for an everlasting covenant. 
So I just thought that that was just amazing that he he mentioned that, and it is. It's almost like a placeholder right after Sukkot where it would naturally fall. So I don't know. That thought I would kind of put that out there and make some kind of makes you think. So we did that, and a great miracle happened here. And about the Song of Moses, oh, in the Battle of Jerusalem. So General Allenby. So here we are coming up on this time frame again. Um, it'll be a hundred years. General Allenby enters Jerusalem on the foot, 11th December 1917. So that's the 26th day of Kislev. Um, then 5678 when that happened. The Battle of Jerusalem occurred during the British Empire's Jerusalem operations against the Ottoman Empire. When fighting for the city developed from 17th of November which that would have been the second month, <laughs> second of Kislev, but on this calendar in 5678, it would have been um, the uh, second of Kislev, continuing after the surrender until 30th December 1917. From November 17, 1917 to December 30th, 1917 is 43 days. And it's a war for Jerusalem, and it's a pattern of 50. So here we are getting ready to go into the 50th, uh, uh, 100th year. So we're at 99 right now until um, we cross over um, to the December 11th when he enters on foot. And I thought it was cool because also on, on November 17th was the good which is the uh, Ethiopian Jewish holiday, and it used to be called Yom Kippur. And just wanted to get this a little bigger so I can see it. And, and here's a picture of this. And I thought it was really cool because the picture caption actually stated, Alan be entering the holy city, the set apart city of Jerusalem on foot 1917 to show respect for the holy place, the set-apart place. So it was referring to the whole city of Jerusalem being the set-apart place. So I did a co-table on a coalition, alliance, allies, and it kind of breaks down like all lies. <laughs> it just, it's really interesting what they're trying to do to Jerusalem behind the scenes. So we have Coalition, and I did this back in March 2017, and it's a skip of 6:43. Okay. Generalize. We have global. We have alliance, coalition again. Persecutor, a pursuer. Response. Persecutor reply, replication, torturer answer. And right across the um, coalition or alliance, look at this. So again, you just kind of you enter the key codes and you enter like the dates and stuff, like the code, and it comes up a gag, and we all know what that was from. And here is where the hay is, and the spirit of Egypt shall be emptied in its midst, and I will destroy its council, and they shall consult idols. So this is in Isaiah. And I thought it was really something that Isaiah came up on the other code table. It's just amazing. Overflow your land like a river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more restraint. So this is for the battle of Jerusalem. Now, um, also did a code table. I can't remember when I did this one though. This was like, okay, so this one is converge because it seems like there's such a convergence of timelines going. That was the concept. And this would be the access term. It was in Exodus 8.22 to Exodus 12.39 is given 3.56. So you have your converge here, that's your access term, triumphant, victor, winner, invisible, concealed, vanish, disappeared, hidden, secret, clandestine, dark, you have a hook, yeah, 
talking about the hook in the jaw. This is where um, it ends at. So here's your access term starting with the Lama, the ending in this verse. And all the firstborn of you in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits on his throne, even to the firstborn. Doesn't have the blood over him on the doorpost. So here is that table. So there's a lot of information here because there's a lot going on. And I wanted to talk about um, John 10.22. And at the time the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem, it was winter. And we're going to read a little bit here. Between the last verse and this, there is an inter interval of time which may roughly take in as two months. My source calculated that the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles was on October 19th and the Feast of Dedication on December 20th. In this interval, we may with great probability place the events and teaching contained in Luke 10.21 and Luke 13.21. So 10.21, and after these things, Jehovah appointed over other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. And it's like leaven, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal to the whole was leaven. So I thought this was extremely, um, just a beautiful connection to what the bread meant and how the bread keeps showing up in here. And I took this part from my the Aramaic that I have, and I've done videos about that. The Feast of Dedication occurred in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And I'll read to you what it says here in the bottom of this. So I just took a screenshot so you can see that. And it goes, you see here, we're looking at the Feast of Dedication 139. Dedication is Hanukkah in Hebrew. Aramaic use of Wadata, literally renewal or to make new. This is the same word for renewed and renewed covenant. Therefore, the new covenant is a renewal or a making new of what Yehovah has already established. Hanukkah exemplifies the cultural war between mythology and paganism. December 25th, Christmas, Ishtar, Sunday, and the kingdom of heaven offered by Hamashiach. 140. This is the next one that says in 29 CE, Hanukkah was from sunset on Sunday, December 16th, to sunset on Monday, December 24th. The middle of the feast crosses the winter solstice on the 21st. So think about that when he stood up in the last day of the feast and he stands. I mean, just some really amazing things here. And then here again, you have Leviticus 24. And, and you talked about the lamps and how you're supposed to burn this right after Sukkot. Kind of like a place marker. He was around my friend was right. So I'm like, wow. That would make that a wonderful connection. And how the 12 loaves known as Shogret, or bread of presence, are a symbolic offering displayed. Um, they represent 12 tribes of Israel, and so, and so some people talk about it. It's the, um, this is from a book, my friend, Bread of the Face, and that's the scriptural name of what they used to call it, what, what they call true bread, or just a similar expression, Angel of the Face, or Angel of His Presence. So, I need to get this out, and I hope this is, and... Um, this is the season of miracles. Um.